So, yeah. This is Cal Katz at Cal Catster. Hopefully this is recording. This is a review of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi episode 4? I guess 4, yeah. Um, yeah. At the end of part 3, he got burned by Vader. And then... And then this one, they sort of put him in a bath of tank and heal him so they can go on another adventure. Meanwhile, they've they uh, the uh, the Inquisitor has captured him to uh, has captured Leia and taken her to the uh, to the planet Kid Leia to the planet to the uh, another Mustafarian planet. Mustafarians, Mustafarian. Oh, uh, referencing the comics and and I think this is also from the uh, EU Sand Universe. Planet, a water planet in this version, uh, where there's a swampy water planet thing, um, and there's a big obelisk base thing. And there, she's in there interrogating her, and she has an ability to Leia, kid Leia has the ability to keep the secrets or whatever, so she can't get to her, so she's going to torture her, basically the whole book. And meanwhile. Um, Obi-Wan and the spy lady infiltrate the obelisk, even though they didn't know where they were going. They're just assuming they went there because the script said so. Uh, and they go there, and spy lady gets in using a trick from the original trilogy. And she's, she's there. She gets there pretending to be a spy. And then um, actually talks to the Inquisitor at one point. And Obi-Wan, he swims down into the ocean, even though he just got recovered from the... I don't know how much time has passed that he was able to recover from skin burns, but apparently he's a Jedi, he's magic. So he goes down there and uh, swims under in to, into a large vent and uh, comes up through the... Uh, somehow through a duct, somehow into the city underwater. Like they they have a they have a vent and he swims into the vent and comes up into I'm I'm assuming some sort of a water reclamation like vent which uh, leads up to the surface of the thing and somehow he's able to appear there without anyone noticing anybody swimming into the thing it must be a sewer or a sewer or something a drain or something they didn't explain. Um, Vader shows up later, yells at the guard lady's gonna choke her, but, uh, and yeah, so, <laughs> and the other, the other dude, who is, ja it's a Japanese guy playing the other Inquisitor, he doesn't like her, but they've got him in this weird white face makeup, which is odd, uh, through the whole thing, so it's like he's a caricature, but he's actually, the actor is actually Asian. It's a character, but he's actually... It's, it's a strange idea. I don't know what they're doing, Disney. Um, also, Leia uh, being rescued from being tortured at the last minute is... Yeah, that's a little lame. Uh, yeah, this episode was, was kind of weak. Um, and I'm just going to go in brief. That's what was going on. The, it's very... It's very uh, it reminds me of the, uh, the, well, the, the... The Rebel show. The Rebels. The Rebels rescued them. Um, and um, Vader's mad because he got rescued and he escaped. One of the rebel ships blew up, but we didn't know who he was. Disney is Disney does this a lot. They'll have they'll introduce somebody with no and, and Paramount does it too. It's not just Disney. <laughs> and also yeah, also Warner Brothers does it. They all the modern. Let's set up a scenario where we, we're going to have an emotional moment where the, the other pilot is killed. And oh no, an emotional moment, and we're sad because this person died, but we didn't know them. It's the same principle of just not knowing them. Uh, th that doesn't make him suddenly scarier or more bad guy like. You don't, you, no one's mentioned him before. Be like, oh, that guy over there, he was the bad guy that I just kept, got rid of. So that, that kind of idea. That, that In this case, it was a rebel. That is not a bad guy. But, but the idea that um, a totally nondescript character is suddenly an emotional moment at the end for this, the death of this character uh, is poorly written. Um, um, we didn't explain who that was. 
we didn't establish what that person was, what they were doing. There's no backstory. If there was something earlier on where they had said, you know, this this character was the guy from episode two that he befriended, and he happened to be leading the charge in this episode, or helping out to lead the charge in this episode, then there would have been more impact when he gets blown up. They would have been like, oh no, the guy that helped us. But they didn't really do that. They didn't earn it. Oh yeah, that's what it they didn't earn the the when they get back. Okay, you earn the story because you have you, you set up a, a character in the story to be somebody and uh, and then just kind of eh, wave it away at the end. Okay, we're done with that drama. Let's go on to the next thing. It's kind of the same way with Moon Knight as well. Um, yeah, it looks to be the same way with She Hulk as well. It's coming out. The idea being, uh, who's ever writing this is probably X Generation, but trying to act millennial. So who's ever writing it, and they're and they're like, and they're like, oh, we just need to mention situations that happen. I like, like the Picard show. I complained about. Probably WandaVision was their best one, because they they tried to resolve the conflicts and have it connected, whereas this one is just like, oh, we're at the end of this episode, so we'll just. Kill off good guy or bad guy, it doesn't matter. Uh, or just go from here to there, it doesn't matter. And, uh, oh, we burnt him, but it's alright. Three minutes later, he's fine. Don't worry about it. You burnt the oh, Obi-Wan there. <laughs> Three minutes later, he's fine. I don't know. Um, yeah, you have to establish a passage of time, space. You have to establish what your characters are doing. How does Spy Lady... That was working for the resistance. How does she know anything as to where? They went? And and they put a tracking device on the robot, the little robot thing, and it's beeping really bright red in the background as, as the scene ends. It's like, I'm thinking I noticed that. It's got jetty powers, or whatever. Now it would have been a funny gag as if he said, "Oh, the little robot has a tracking device on it." Well, let Vader think he knows where to go. <laughs> they should have done something. See that that's that, yeah, it's better set up. Like they know they don't care. Uh yeah. <laughs> Lead them back to uh, Orgenia. It does beg the question, didn't Vader can't Vader sense his daughter? I know he doesn't know yet at this point. Now it would have been a cool idea, I was thinking. What would what would have been cool is if maybe they'll do it later. They have two set two episodes to get to it. Uh, if Darth Vader wasn't officially called Darth Vader yet, but then when he finds out he has a daughter that's Leia, then, then he becomes Darth Vader. The fa Darth Father. Yes. <laughs> they won't do that. That's silly. But, but, uh... Hmm. Yeah. And there's the Calicat story now in a galaxy far away. Not not a long time ago, but now a galaxy far away. Yeah. They didn't want that either. Um... <laughs> Is this why a Star Trek guy shouldn't necessarily be doing a Star Wars or vice versa? <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm. This is Calcat, the Calcat Star, and this is a review of, of uh, Obi Wan Kenobi Episode 5. It's called Episode 5, Part 5. Um, basically, go to a planet. Karen or something. Karen, maybe? <laughs> uh, they go to this, this sort of rocky planet and go hide in a bunker thing. And Darth Vader shows up. Early on in the, in the beginning of the story, he makes her the uh, the Inquisitor, but it's kind of a trick. Um, he, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, there were hints that the other guy that got stabbed with the lightsaber was going to come back. Uh, yeah, the one from, I guess he's the guy from Rebels, I, I guess. So, yet again, we introduce a character that you would have to know, like they do with Mandal uh, Mandalorian and with, uh, and with, uh, Boba Fett. We introduce a character from another show, as if he's really cool and awesome and stuff, and not explain the backstory to the audience at all. Just, oh, he's there. Yeah, um that um yeah they didn't explain that and and uh so he's he's there and 
Uh, he comes back. Yeah, at the end. Um, anyway, so spoilers. Uh, the, uh, but she gets shafted too. By, by the guy. Hmm. I guess a lot of the, the, there are, I'm sure the whole thing was filmed like months ago and now it, you know, it came out as a show, but I'm sure it was filmed months ago. Anyway, so, uh, so, the little droid has a tracking device, it goes in somehow and it messes with part of the thing so they can't close the door. The rebels are coming in and the, oh, the uh, invaders are coming in, the Empire coming into the, they came to the planet in the Star Destroyer. And they're and they're attacking, and uh, Obi Wan tries to surrender himself to to the Inquisitor lady, in order to convince the Inquisitor lady that that he's try to try to uh, turn her. I guess she used to be one of the younglings from ten years earlier. I thought he killed them all, but Vader killed them all. But uh, it was Anakin. But I guess he didn't. Um, he left one of them alive. Uh, yeah, they keep cutting back to uh, Obi Wan fighting Anakin in the third movie, in the in the scene where they were testing each other. They were doing a testing of their abilities in the beginning. Um, the uh, and then they fought at the end. To, to, yeah, uh, the uh, they expand on that scene. I'm not sure if they reshot footage of that. I don't recall that scene happening like that. I think they reshot some stuff um, with them. Yeah. I'm not sure, but also earlier I thought that that wasn't James Earl Jones doing the voice because it didn't sound that much like him, but it is. Uh, he's over 90, and he just sounds like he's 90. So, yeah, um, it is him. Uh, the Inquisitor guy, the twist ending, you saw a mile away, comes along, and um, she turns on Vader because Obi-Wan convinces her to. Uh, it doesn't work, and she loses. So, uh, put her guy shows up and gets her, kills her with a sword to get revenge on. Uh, yeah, it's it's curious that the uh, that they that this the Galactic Empire, which which you know Star Wars is, is Galactic Empire, I think based on yeah, and and of course uh, they'll get to that in a minute. So the they. they Leia goes up into the, they let Leia crawl up into the thing and turn off the fuse box or whatever. So she finds the droid and stops the tracking device. But they leave behind another piece of the tracking device, which was the tattooing message thing on the ground. So that's kind of odd. Um, the wizard lady finds it as she's dying or almost dying on the ground. She's probably not dying, though. She'll probably be back. <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, the idea of a galaxy-spanning space empire with lightspeed travel, uh, fantastical lightspeed travel, similar to Isaac Asimov's Foundation or, or Frank Herbert's Dune, the Hyperion Saga, or, or Star Wars in this case, because he was uh, George Lucas totally read Dune and all the and the Asimov's Empire Foundation, yeah, absolutely. Um, by <laughs> reference to Dune. Uh, yeah, the idea of an empire, and Star Trek did this to an extent too with different groups in the Federation. Um, they tried to do it a little more realistically in that the Klingon Empire didn't span the whole galaxy, nor did the Cardassians or Helgami, nor did the Romulan Star Empire, nor did the Federation. The parts of the galaxy, the whole thing. Because that would make sense. Even if they had warp drive. Another thing that doesn't make sense in these sci fi stories is you're only limited to your number of people in your cast going to a certain planet and gathering together. This uh, rocky planet they go to, there's a number of extras, but many of them are CG. And uh, so they did add a little, a few more people to, to, the, to, mix, to make your world building make sense. Uh, a little bit more. But really, really, they, they act like these places aren't populated and, and aren't like, together. These, this newer Star Wars series, though, do establish more of a uh, a world building aesthetic by putting more people on the streets and stuff. Because as it was in, in the earlier stuff, there weren't that many people in the Empire. How are they running the whole Empire if there are only a few? Maybe a thousand in one place or another? Maybe two thousand in one place or another? How did they go the entire galaxy? There would be untold trillions of them. There would have to be in order to take over different planets and maintain them. There would be trillions of them. 
<laughs> the bad guy. Empire. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't just have one emperor controlling everything because that wouldn't really make sense. Because how? How would he? <laughs> yeah, especially in, even in a super liminal society, he, he could. Yeah. Um. So the first order kind of didn't work. Um. But yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's curious. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the bait and switch episode. He kind of knew what Vader was up to because he, he made her the Inquisitor just to get rid of her. Apparently, he knew what she, he knew what she was gonna do. So the uh, <laughs> yeah, and they act like they can read minds, but then they act like they can't. Like oh, she tries to probe Leia's mind. She's gonna torture her. Uh, she can't. She's good at blocking it or something. It's like, or if Vader probes the lady's mind or whatever, or, or Kenobi sees senses Vader. Uh, they never quite explain how their telepathy works. It seems to be working intermittently, depending on the script. If they if they actually had telepathy, then they, they literally knew what their other guy, their opponent was going to do. It would be impossible to have lightsaber battle. They they knew what they were doing before they did it. I mean, one of them would make a parry, and somebody would do a thrust. And, They'd be like, okay, I'm going to attack me. Makes the lightsaber battle in the original New Hope episode um, make more sense in that they both knew what they were going to do, so whoom, that was kind of it. It was real short. Huh. Uh, yeah, so, so it doesn't break canon if Kenobi escapes, and Kenobi does escape so. <laughs> in the story. Uh, he could have met Vader. Some of the writers were saying that. He could have met Vader earlier. They said it has been a long time. They didn't say how long. It was ten years before uh, A New Hope. So. He could have. Um, curious to know why they uh, held it back for another planet they landed on. I guess another set they wanted to use. Or a screen, a blue screen, green screen set. Because really they didn't need to they could have wrapped it up by saying, okay, let's just take her immediately on the ship. Let's take Leia back to her planet. Just immediately, like, pfft, back to her planet. They didn't do that. And the only thing that makes sense is that they knew the tracking device was there. And they didn't want to lead her back to the planet. So they led her to this other planet instead. But they didn't say that. So. Anyway. Because, again, it's that sort of millennial thing, though. Uh, we have to get to the end of the story as fast as possible because our last act is weak. So, we'll, uh, double cross, sure. Um, oops. <laughs> or a bad guy we didn't know about pops up. Or a bad guy we didn't know was going to reappear. Yeah. Anyway, so some of it's not working too well. Moon Knight was also an odd duck. Anyway, sorry. <laughs>